Jonathan Emort is up for us tonight. He is with us once a month. He is a brilliant American patriot and constitutional attorney who has fought the federal government, most specifically the FDA, for years and has beaten them. And that is no mean feat. Are you there, Jonathan? Jeff, good to be with you. Well, thank you very much. You were in court today? Yes, I was. You are. You, <laughs> Folks, this man works. He's not one who sits back and just does talk shows. That's. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, honestly, I've had a little experience in court, and I, I just don't know how good people like you and many of you listening who have been involved in court matters can go into court and come out without feeling somehow depleted, tarnished, if if not damaged. It's a very difficult situation. Now, I know a lot of you guys in the legal profession know the attorneys, at least somewhat, and you know what to expect. But still, it's got to be emotionally draining on you. It has to be. Well, it's the art of persuasion. And uh, if you have a judge that doesn't seem to share your view, it's a challenge, of course, but that's yeah. what it's all about. Um, I, I love it. I've I've enjoyed the practice of law very much. It's not to say that the uh, legal system is perfect or that the that the circumstances in which we exist are conducive to justice. They aren't. Right. But right. Um, it's, now, that's uh, an I'm important... always up for the challenge. Yeah, that's an important point. The circumstances in which we live are not conducive to justice. That's, that's, that's quite that, right. That's what you said, and you couldn't have said it any better. Uh, a little tidbit today. The, the FDA apparently has come out against uh, what they're calling mobile phone medical apps, and they don't want people to have them. Uh, everywhere we look, you can hear the sound of ratcheting, ratcheting, ratcheting. And what you're hearing is the loss of more and more freedoms. So now... Apps are a target of the federal government if they deal with any kind of medical diagnostics or anything like that. So they're really, uh, they're really amazing. I mean, the, the story itself uh, came out. Uh, let me just read a little bit of it. Mobile medical apps are prolific in the market. This is, again, Jonathan Emords. Uh, created by physicians and scientists. Most are used by physicians and hospitals to accelerate and reduce human error associated with computations needed for the use of various devices to improve the quality of imaging used in diagnosis and treatment decisions and to permit real-time remote monitoring of cardiopulmonary functions, blood sugar levels, brainwave patterns, and numerous other indications of disease. Now, you folks probably don't know much about this, but if you've been in a doctor's office lately... It probably is not going to come as a surprise to many of you or some of you that a lot of doctors walk around with iPads now, and they go right to them. And I say more power to them. So Jonathan has written a, an article about this, and it's it's up in headlines, and it's called FDA Reigns on Mobile Medical App Parade. Tell us more about that, would you? Well, this is a real uh, uh, horrendous disaster for the future of medicine. Uh, it shouldn't come as a surprise to us that the government is trying to use every means in its power to limit the free market and whatever's left of a free market in medicine to take it away. Um, what, what's happening here uh, in the IT community and in the medical community is a revolution that enables physicians to monitor vital signs of patients at remote locations away from the hospital or away from the clinic sure. through the use of iPads and iPhones and through the use of software, medical mobile, mobile medical apps that um, are brilliant in that they enable a physician to get all of the diagnostic information he would ordinarily acquire from the patient directly in his presence at the hospital or in the clinic. And what this means, if this continues and the trend is no doubt going to continue unless the government snuffs it out, is that all those people who are dying of MRSA in the hospital because they contracted it there or, mm -hmm. or other diseases there or who are uh, um, left uh, in dire straits with inadequate care 
or away from their loved ones uh, will be able to be with their loved ones, be in their own homes, have this information transmitted to a physician wherever he is, Mm -hmm. and the machines themselves, the apps themselves, will notify the physician if there's an abnormality in a reading. The physician can then call the patient or call the patient's caregiver and alert them to the need to take certain measures to rectify the situation or can then order the patient into the hospital in an emergency scenario or go there, uh, go to the patient's bedside. Uh, but this is an extraordinary thing because it will reduce the amount of dependency on in-hospital and clinic care and increase the accuracy of diagnosis and the uh, the real-time responsiveness of uh-huh. physicians to their patients' needs. My God, well, it's a lifesaver. Event, Absolutely a lifesaver. Oh, I mean, tremendous. Yeah. Can, I'll just give you one example. Um, this is a real-life example, and this is also a good example of how the government's regulation in this area is destroying innovation and preventing these things from getting into the market. Um, in the future, they will. There's a doctor at the Cleveland Clinic, Martin Winehouse is his name. He's a uh, a, a physicist, a medical physicist, uh-huh. and he uh, developed with his colleagues in the radiation department at, at uh, Cleveland a program, software program, that would perform uh, hundreds of complex calculations in less than two minutes that ordinarily would be done manually and would take, even with the best of them, at least a half an hour and would frequently involve errors. And what these calculations were for Mm -hmm. was to guide three different X-ray machines in the delivery of radiation to a breast tumor Mm -hmm. so that it would be delivered, uh, if the calculations get it right, Right. with the right amount of dosing, not overdosing and not underdosing, and not destroying healthy tissue that's near the uh, tumor. That's brilliant. The the triangulation... The the triangulation... Of death to tumors, three different beams. I got it. Yep. Yep. And in order to do that, uh, he developed this software to eliminate the errors. Well, anyway, he contacted the FDA because he was told that before this thing could be used extensively or sold Mm -hmm. in the market, he would have to get approval from the FDA. So he goes to the FDA with an application to get approval for this thing. And uh, they start bombarding him with questions. But the question that proved to be the coup de grace for this whole thing, was one that was impossible to answer. The FDA asked him before they would allow approval to prove that in every uh, um, uh, version of a PC or, or a Mac computer and all of the updates to such computer systems, mm-hmm. that, this, that this software program would operate flawlessly without any error. Oh, please. And, of oh. course, this is impossible to establish. Yeah. It's it's literally impossible. Even if they had a hundred medical mm-hmm. physicists and others mm-hmm. working around the clock for years, they could still never never be able to predict what chance. updates would come. That's right. So so he abandoned the project, and as a result, all of the uh, uh, oncologists and others around the country who do these computations are doing them manually and committing errors uh, and underdosing and overdosing, as a matter of course, because they don't have right. This software. And this is a current example. Now, look, a quick question. You mentioned before he sold the app, he went to the FDA. What would happen if he gave it away and accepted a donation to a some kind of sort of a, a nonprofit? W- would that would get around still, in any way? Unfortunately, no, because okay. the distribution of a regulated medical device is, is subject to regulation distribution as well. of a regulated medical device. All right. We've heard that before. See, this is not representative, and I don't have to tell you folks this, of an agency that cares about your health and well-being. It is simply not. And a couple more questions about this with Jonathan Emord as we continue in just a minute. 